Apple push notifications devices. First, we need to create an identifier for for a new app. Just select app ID, then select app, then fill in an explicit bundle ID. In our case, is com dot k e n g o r o o. Just like this. Can go rule. Then select those uh, permissions and capabilities that you need. In most cases, it could be like iCloud, sign in with Apple, just in case you don't have to implement each of these capabilities, you just need to add those capabilities. And and also maybe Apple Pay. That's all. The most important is push notifications for us. And for Apple Pay, you need to create a merchant ID. So you just turn off uh, signing in with Apple right now. And after you created it, you go to certificates and then create a Apple push notification certificate sandbox and production. You select the same certificate you just created. Kangaroo, Kangaroo, and you choose that signing request. Request from Apple search push notification signing request, and then we download and import this certificate to export to re-export it as P12 certificate. Uh, we'll need it. Uh, in Firebase to download it, open this certificate and you'll you'll see it in keychain. So I open it. We don't need this certificate after we re exported it. Here it is. So we just export this certificate without the password. Um can go root. let's name it like this push notify APN. APN, Apple, Apple Push Notifications, Apple Search. Here we save it without the password. Voila, we don't need it anymore. We just delete it. And the next step, we go to and create a new project. Or if it's already created, you should create a new application. In our case, it's iOS application. You should give the same bundle ID as, as it was in the previous step. So it will be K E N G O R O O double And you shouldn't write that. So we only need one file from here. After it's created, you store it in the proper place and we will use it on the next step. Uh, we don't need to do it because we have those templates. Okay, skip this step. Then we go to settings, cloud messaging, and under cloud messaging, here we need to select your app, your new newly created iOS app, and under cloud messaging you need to select the same app and import EPN certificates under both development and production uh, browse and choose the same certificate that we just exported that was for one and then the second one is production you can test it under development stage and on, pro on the production stage on a real device as well with the same certificate for p8 certificate you only can uh, import it eight, three times 
so it's a limited solution. So in our case, APN certificates is you can use it any any number of times. So we finish with Firebase site. Let's go to the next step. To download the project, which we need to adjust. So we need to replace assets and configurations. To do that, copy configurations file to assets CFG configurations. Then you need to recreate iOS. I will remove that iOS directory. So go to terminal and run flutter create in current directory. It will recreate iOS to the latest version, otherwise it won't work. And then you copy these icons to freshly created iOS subfolder under runner assets and app icon just replace all apply to all after you replaced it you need to go to to assets folder again and replace this logo under images there is a logo you need to replace it but after you replaced it you need to change the default splash screen color according to this color to do that go to lib folder sources pages splash splash screen and under splash screen you go to to that background color theme of context just comment out this part and then add the color you want this Google service info placed under iOS runner folder sorry under runner folder that's right and afterwards we need to open this project in Xcode and then we need to set a bundle ID and change a developer under it so after you opened it go to runner and select add files to runner then select the file which you just added before and copy it so you have that reference file reference to a file here and now you can use it don't forget to install. You can actually you can run it automatically, but maybe you need to run it manually for the install. And after you're running it, it will, Xcode will re ask you uh, will ask you to relaunch the project from with a new version from a disk. Then you select Runner, Signing and Capabilities. Before you select General, and you set the new ID. My case is leave this one. Yeah, it's already updated again twice. Okay, we need to reopen it again. And after I change the bundle ID here, let's set this one. Then set the version you need. Usually I set the same for the build. But maybe it's not a good practice, but it works for me. I do this this way. And it always works because I have to remember only one version in this case. And then under signing and capabilities, you select that developer account that you want to sign with, and you add the capabilities like push notifications and background modes. And under background modes, you should select remote notifications as background fetch. After that, go to App Delegate, and under that, under that function return, firstly we need to import Google Maps, and then we need to add two imports. This one. So we need to here 
these two. The first one is for Google Maps, the second one is for notifications. Yeah, easy to understand. And that's probably about it. And the only thing that you didn't finish, you need to go to info list. I usually edit it as a source code, you can edit it with the built-in capabilities. But for me it's easier to edit it with a source. Just add those uh, requirements, permissions about location. In case you need to access photos, you need to add more permissions and etc. etc. But in my, my case, just these two permissions. And on that stage, we've finished.